So you are like, what, what is the um, credentialing you have through the ICPA? So I'm certified in the Webster technique, which is basically focused on um, taking care of pregnant patients. What's the ICPA? So the ICPA is the International Chiropractic Pediatric Association. So they do a lot okay. of courses and seminars geared towards uh, pregnancy and taking care of kids as well. Okay, so yeah. you went in when you were in school. When we're in school, we learn all about taking care of kids. Yep. Um, and your experience in terms of taking care of kids is just like, at least with me, it was people coming in, bringing their kid in and being like, oh, you, I mean, do you kind exactly. of just like learn to treat them? So yep. Yep. what made you want to reach out to the ICPA? Because it's a different course, right? It is different. And what, yeah. what's the length of time? Like, why is this, why is it different than what they teach us in school? Because I'm actually unfamiliar with the whole entire ICPA process. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Webster technique specifically is something that I was interested in pursuing because it is focused on women's health and I've always just had a passion for working with women. I feel like it's kind of an um, underappreciated aspect of healthcare, especially when it comes to chiropractic care. Yep. Um, and a lot of people don't even realize that it's a safe thing for pregnant patients to go through, mm -hmm. but it's a very gentle technique. Um, basically, we use a pillow that kind of supports the pregnant belly. And this is the Webster technique? This is the Webster yep. technique, yep. And basically the concept is to assess the pelvis and the sacrum, which is the, the base of the spine, Yep. Um, and make sure that those muscles and ligaments that attach to that region aren't overcompensating on one side versus the other. Okay. So especially, as you progress through pregnancy and get into maybe third trimester, you start to feel a lot of pain more in the front than in the back. Um, yep. Usually that's due to the round ligament being taut on one side versus the other. The round ligament is the part that attaches from, does it attach to the spine to the uterus? Yes. Yeah? Yep. Okay, yep. so that, that ligament there helps support the uterus. Exactly. With the growing uterus, right? Yep. So yep. that's a common pain, right? So the round ligament pain, exactly. you've got rib pain, and rib then pain. Uh, pubic symphysis pain, exactly. like pubic bone pain. Yep. And those all are things that through the ICPA and this Webster technique that they taught you, mm -hmm. it really helps target those. Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so especially if you're getting like the typical lightning crotch that yeah. a lot of women will get, um, just shooting, sharp shooting pain that is in that region, it can just help to alleviate that extra pain and tension that's going on there. So when you went to, how long is this, this training? So the Webster technique is just a few days. It's it's like a 24 hour course basically yep. that you take. But the ICPA licensing with it yep. is you just reach out to them, yep. you license through them and they send you what the documents and information that's specific exactly. for that. Yep. And that's how you've been able to stay up on all of the pregnancy women's health. Yep, so stuff. every month we get a magazine that has uh, the latest research and. Mm -hmm. I always make sure to read up on that. I always like to look at the evidence and make sure that what I'm doing is up to date with yeah. what everyone else is doing as well. Okay, so some of the things with Webster Technique, when I first started practicing, it's like I, I just knew of treating pregnancy through school, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing specialized. Yep. And people would call up the office asking if I performed the Webster Technique, mm -hmm. primarily for like late stage uh, pregnancy yep. and flipping the baby. Okay. What does the Webster, what is that? What, like when they talk yep. about flipping the baby, uh, what is happening there? Why do, I'm assuming midwives or nurses, mm -hmm. or even just friends, why do they recommend pregnant women to go find Webster technique for flipping yeah. baby? So actually, we do not flip the baby with okay. Webster technique, and I want to make that really clear. We're not turning breech babies. Um, so where did that come from? Do, do you have any idea? So I think the reason why people associate Webster's with potentially <clears throat> turning or flipping a baby is because when we create more room in the uterus and more room in the pelvis, okay. that can naturally allow that baby to just have that room to, to yeah. turn and position itself so that it's more optimally positioned gotcha. for birth. Okay. But the goal of Webster technique is not at all to turn or flip okay. babies. It's just to make sure the baby has adequate space in the womb. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Because, I mean, when I first, 10 years ago, I remember that coming up, oh, you flip babies? I'm like, I don't know anything yeah, about no, flipping babies. No, that's that, and they 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 make it very clear when we learn that technique. They do. We are not flipping babies. Cool. The real goal is just to create more room and more balance yeah. in the pelvis. Because if everything is in the space and yeah. has the space that's appropriate, I yeah. mean, naturally, humans have been having babies for hundreds of thousands of years, right? And the vast majority of them come out with their head out. No, I mean, it, as long as the space is there, it should. Yeah operate in the way that we were designed, right? right. And, but in this day and age too, we're doing a lot more sitting. 
You know, yeah. people are just more sedentary than they used to be hundreds of years ago. Yeah. So, so when you are in that flexed position, yeah. you're going to naturally be changing how your pelvis is positioned ah. throughout the day. And over time, that can lead to more tension, yeah. whether it's in the lower back, in the front. But I mean, also, you have to look at the pregnant patient as what's happening to them as they're as their pregnancy progresses, yeah. right? I mean, your whole center of gravity is shifting, so yep. you're putting a lot more stress on the rib cage, like you mentioned, on yep. the pelvis. There's more stress in the front as well as everything's kind of working together to, to try okay. and create more space for yep. the baby. So in Webster Technique, we also look at the hip flexors in the okay. front as well, and we do a little assessment to see if that's tight, and if so, we just do some gentle stretching to okay. relieve tension there. All right, cool. So now give me, from ICPA, you say yep. they send you information. What have you noticed over the last few months, uh, or maybe the last year, that they're really uh, feeding you guys in terms of popular things amongst um, ICP, uh, ICPA information or uh, information that's relevant for you guys? Yeah, well, especially with COVID too, um, a lot of people weren't necessarily going out to seek out the care that they were used to getting. I mean, even if I they see. were going into their OB's office, they couldn't bring their spouse or their partner with them. Mm -hmm. um, so just trying to give them the tools that they need if they come in to see us, maybe if it's through a mental health provider or through mm -hmm. um, other interdisciplinary type of care so that we can make sure that they are receiving the best care possible. Yeah. Okay. So they so send they you that. Stress stuff. that and I definitely also believe in working, you know, within the community and yeah. reaching out to other practitioners to make sure that we're getting the best care for that patient. Okay. So yeah. in your previous position, you saw a lot of pregnancy, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. you had a lot of success with it and you worked well with other providers. Yeah. Now, some of the providers, I mean, just in the last couple of weeks that you started here, you were asking me, where is my so-and-so provider, so-and-so provider, so-and-so provider? The yeah. big providers that you worked with a lot in the past were what? So, pelvic floor therapist That's is what huge. you keep saying, yeah. yeah. So if you know anyone yeah. that's a pelvic floor therapist, please let us know. Yeah, we would love that info. Um, and you work with them collaboratively with every single pregnant patient? The majority of them. Really? Yeah. So actually, it was more commonly postpartum. So as a I part see. of yep. that fifth, that fourth trimester, yep. where you're starting to heal from birth and the whole labor process, it's really important to make sure that you get that pelvic floor assessed because if there is a weakness going on, that's going to affect your stability and your low back pain in the long term. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. you can imagine if there is actual tearing, right. right, and there has to be stitching together. There are multiple layers of tissue, not just the like the external skin tissue that tears. It yep. could be muscular tissue and Absolutely. all of that. So you gotta make yeah. sure that all stays healthy and is um, the integrity is there. Mm -hmm. All right, so the pelvic floor, what else? Anyone else? Um, so just physical therapists in general, I always like to reach yeah. out with and work with. Um, making sure we have a good orthopedist or good a good practice where we can refer out to because you know depending on if it's shoulder, hip, knee, Everyone has their specialty, so I like having those contacts as well, and then pain management specialists as well. And where would a pain management specialist fit in with pre pregnancy, post-pregnancy? Where do they where do they lie with in terms of women's health? So in terms of women's health, I mean, maybe not necessarily the best yeah. uh, per referral, but I'm thinking if someone's coming in with, you know, maybe they were pregnant and they had a disc herniation that you. kind of flared up yeah, and then post, post pregnancy, it's not healing the way we like to see it. I yep. would potentially refer them out. So we got to be able to refer them off quickly uh, yeah. if we need to, when we realize throughout the pregnancy, we're able to treat, we know the symptoms. And then if they post pregnancy, if those symptoms are still uh, apparent and they're not improving, then we got to make sure that we can refer them out too. Absolutely. All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Nothing? No, I think All right, we've cool. covered that one well. Perfect. See, yeah. super easy. Yeah, right. All right, cool, cool. <laughs>